building on what we've already learned regarding tables, constraints, and actually making this into a practical advanced program, we're actually going to create an email validator that checks an email string uh, and considers whether it's in a proper format uh, to within within the query will actually consider whether it's in proper format. Now this is important, like we said, we can't always guarantee that things are rigid when they're inputted into systems and then taken into SQL. So we want to check the, the data integrity and this is a perfect candidate to do this. So I'll just add a comment and I'll say email validation script. And what we need to do first is create a very simple table. So we will create a table and call it email validation. Expand out the parenthesis there, and we will say email address is a var card data type. Give it 100 characters. They're not going to be longer than this. In the real world, they might be. You might be worth doing max or 255 because you could have a very long email address depending on the structure that it's created in and also the names. And building on some constraints, we'll say not null. Obviously, this is the only primary column. We're not going to be linking it to anywhere, so we don't need a key. We just need a not null constraint. And that's our, our table. We'll add go to execute the batch statement because we're going to just do it all in order. And then we'll say insert into email validation. We want to insert in some values, don't we? Values. And I will add four parentheses to do this efficiently. <clears throat> okay, so in here we will say smithers at gmail.com. Continuing on the Simpsons theme, smithers at gmail.com. In the second item, I will put burns at gmail.com. Down here, I'll put gumble.gmail.com. Deliberate mistake there. And then someone has had a shocker and implemented in or inputted in another wrong email address, not paying attention. So we just have at yahoo.com. So we've got our table called email validation, varcar data type. It's not null, naturally. We need, an, we need values in this column. We'll insert it into email validation, the following values, smithers at gmail.com, burns at gmail.com, gumble.gmail.com, and at yahoo.com. And now we're going to write a small query to validate this and test it. So we will say select email address. It's fairly straightforward. And then we're going to actually introduce the case statement. So we'll say case when email address like and then we're going to set out this pattern to essentially validate that the the um, gmail is actually coming through or the the email address is actually coming through in the right format so i will say at need an at there underscore or percentage and then we'll move after that to an underscore dot and three underscores and then finally a percentage so that should align uh, percentage underscore at underscore percentage and i'll explain this in just a second underscore dot three underscores okay then we'll say then valid email format we'll say else 
invalid email format and we'll say end we'll alias this column here as email format check and lastly from email validation all right so in this query what we're saying is we want to select the email address and then we're making up this case uh, statement based column called email format check and it wants to match this pattern for the email address so a good email address for example is this top item smithers at gmail.com and within this pattern we're saying we need to identify the at we need to identify the full stop as part of the pattern we need three underscores which means three characters and dot com and then the percentage and other characters to precede the at and follow it on well if it satisfies that structure we'll say valid email format and if it doesn't it's an invalid email format and as email format check from the table email validation so we're actually going to run all of this together now by simply clicking execute and you can see I get the expected results smithers at gmail.com is a valid email format burns at gmail.com valid email format because it has the at the, the dot the com presence gumball.gmail.com is an invalid email format because it doesn't include the at that we specified and at yahoo.com is also invalid because it doesn't have anything that precedes the at symbol as per the logic that we stated here so that's actually a really good real life scenario that could genuinely come in beneficial and it's um, not too hard to implement it's definitely more on the advanced side of things but it's also cemented things like creating tables data types constraints uh, what you would often hear it say in Python is rejects, regular expressions, which is basically pattern matching. We can replicate that with uh, the like here and the case statement, so that's fine. And yeah, it's quite a slick solution, uh, pretty concise, and feel free to play around with it. Uh, modify the, the wildcard operators and see what you can come to.